Welcome, welcome back to DAP Build. Happy New Year, happy new approach to tackling this car moving forward. If you haven't seen my previous videos, please do go back and watch them. You get to see how we got to this point in time, kind of. I don't actually show you how I got the tub off the frame. What we do have here is my Porsche Turbo replica, and well, now it's in a couple of pieces. So, what we have is the space frame exposed to the Beetle chassis now. We can see all the workings of that. We can see the extreme amount of rust. And of course, at the same time, I will just say that at the moment, this may be extremely choppy. I am fighting so much noise in the background from trucks. I do apologize. Unfortunately, I've been literally waiting about 30 minutes, stopping, starting, stopping, starting. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get there eventually. We will go a bit further over this today. And of course, I'll show you some of the weird things I've actually found with this frame. I'm sure it's fine, but the OCD in me is really not liking it. So looking straight down the center line here, it doesn't look too bad there. I will show you a bit more detail. Obviously, there is a bit of towing at the front. I've also got odd bod size tires, so that's really not helping the visual effect at the moment. The machine isn't sitting exactly level. The rear suspension here is kind of wonky, which does happen when these IRS kind of wear down. But the biggest problem I have is if you have a look along these lines here, and I'll take you on the other side in a second, this side here curves outwards, as in away from the inside of the vehicle. On the passenger side, however, it's kind of going inwards towards the cabin. These two arms here are not equal on either side. Secondary to that, the piece back here at either section isn't equally spaced either. So I have a bit less space on this side compared to this side. If I try to line it up with the centre of the tyres, I've got more exposure on the left than I do on the right. Obviously, that throw out and the kink does make a bit of a difference there. The other problem, which will be sorted anyway, I have decided on this much, but there is something wrong with the geometry back here. This wheel, and I have yet to determine if it's the wheel or something to do with the suspension, has a bit of toe out, and this one is perfectly fine. There is no adjustment for toe out in the back of these cars, which means something's bent. If I actually put a tape measure from either end of the tyre facing inwards to the valve cover, there is a fair bit of a gap. Now in the previous build episode, I did mention about these front arms here flexing outwards, and when I had these tightened up, the A arm that went underneath the machine was getting wedged. These here, as you can see, I haven't tightened these bolts up. You can see daylight right through the center. This here needs to have a bit of packing behind it in order to stop that so it doesn't pull in. It's okay, obviously, to have a bit of pull in because you, know, you want everything to be tight anyway, but when it's causing a pinch on the A-arm at the bottom, there's definitely something not right. The other problem is too, these beads along here, they've only got four bolts securing this whole section here to the floor pan and then obviously when the tub's on top, the rest of these bolts that go through that secure the tub to the base and then of course the rest of this, well they're lined up, kind of, but these screws here, I should be able to lift this frame off rather easily, I can't do it. Even if I tighten this up, the bolts want to fight me, so there's something not aligned it's not sitting flush. It is actually a bit distorted. Or it's just full of gunk. I mean, there is that much rubber. <sighs> They've got so much of this stuff, which of course is just allowed rust to get wild through here. Again, sitting out in the weather hasn't done a lot of favors either. But there's so much of this, and it wasn't even really doing its job either. It wasn't a filler. It wasn't securing the tub. Again, I could get a screwdriver through there really easily. It just wore so badly. It wasn't the right material to use to begin with. There is a proper rubber gasket, which when you have a beetle top on it, would go in between that and of course the base. I will do that, but I'll have to use double the amount. So one underneath this, and then of course one on top for the tub. It's probably a bit overkill. I don't need to do it, but I don't want to do this. This is rubbish. So that can go. The floor pan, obviously, 
not too bad. Again, reasonably solid overall. Does have a lot of flex in it. Um, like it's not the thickest metal I know. They were built light, cheap, etc., and so on. There's a lot of flex though. Um, I don't know if that's simply because it's a Beetle chassis or if it's fatigued. I will talk to a shop that deals with Beetles just to see whether or not the floor pan is okay or I do need to go to the trouble of replacing the entire floor pan. The main frame itself from the front to the back doesn't seem to be too bad. Again, a bit of rust here and there at the front section. That can be treated. It's reasonably okay. I will need to sort the front section out. Those are not lining up. Those bolts are not sitting true. So once I remove that entire assembly, check the threads, maybe replace the bolts, ensure that everything's okay there. I'm going to think about a different way of doing the front nose support. I'm really not happy with that flimsy piece of steel. I don't know how well this comes up on the sound, but man, these trucks are annoyingly loud today. There's so much movement out there. Anyway. It's not going to stop. I don't even know where I was now. Moving on. So as mentioned before, this section here doesn't seem to be 100% square, does it? If you have a look, this one here, again, bowing inwards, that one there, bowing outwards. When the tub was on and I looked underneath atop the wheels, I could see there was a bit of displacement. I ended up pushing the body over because I thought that these were square, but the body wasn't. And that was kind of throwing me off a little bit. These, of course, here were resting on the back top section. And because the bolt holes were there, there were also bolt holes in that. I ended up putting those through, and I thought that was how it was going to be square. These are a different metal compared to the rest of the chassis. These are an afterthought. This bottom section here does seem to be the same as the original, but these top bits here have definitely been added on. They're not complete. It's not the same type of weld join. Weird to say that, but you can kind of tell people's work sometimes. And of course, it's not prepped, so it stands to reason these were not meant to be there in the first place. This height also, it's a bit exaggerated, but this, I believe, was also contributing to the gap that I had at the rear section here where I could fit my hand into. I think removing these is the way to go, and then, of course, having the tub resting on the Beetle chassis then we can look at remaking these properly so they actually do have the correct height, but also just a bit more substance. There's very little here. I would prefer to have the entire section resting on something, just so it gives a bit more structure and strength. Um, I may even do that for the back section as well. There were literally some chunks of timber in there. Why? Anyway, so... This here, I can't really do much about it. It's the way it was put together. I don't know, Friday afternoon job. It's, it, it itches. I mean, I'm not going to see it. Once the tub's back on, I'm not going to see it. It's not going to be a problem. But man, it drives me crazy. It's an OCD thing that one side is not the same as the other. The measurements are ever so slightly out, and I'm trying to figure out square. It's just not happening for me. The front ends. With the tub off, I can now see everything underneath here, which is great. Because the trucks are so noisy, I can't keep talking. The front end. Now the tub's off, we get to see everything underneath here. These four bolts are the only thing that secures this entire section to the rest of the chassis. There is one bolt which has given me a bit of a headache, which of course is allowing the entire thing to flex and of course not have the right side of the vehicle true. This will need to come off anyway, and then I'll find out why the bolts aren't sitting properly. I may have to replace one, maybe re-thread one. But everything seems to be in order. There's no twists, there's no breaks, there's no cracks. Nothing seems to be out of the order. It is simply just not sitting properly because of that bolt. This horrible piece of crud here will be going. It's pathetic in its structure. When you consider how much meat is at the rear of the car, around the motor and everything, and then everything up here stops. There is no structure leading forward over the arches or anything as such. I don't really get why that's the case. So what I'm going to do... With the A-frame back on underneath, and it's got the extension bar here, 
I'm going to have fabricated up a new piece which will then sit up under the tub and around near the petrol tank just to give it a bit more structure and strength. I don't really like this flimsy thing that, of course, it looks like an afterthought. The welds here, the cut-ups, it really does not fit the rest of everything that's attached to the car. So that'll be going. We will make something really nice and proper. Probably not as chunky as that, but it'll be similar enough and it will hold a bit more weight. Not that it really needs to. The wheels, well, again, at the moment, they seem to be sitting okay. The steering components are a mess. Everything here, the whole thing needs to be rebuilt. All the bushings, the ball joints, everything. It just needs to be replaced with new components. No surprise there. Unfortunately, it's a bit more cost more than anything else, but it's a 70s car, like this is a 1970 chassis. So with the rest of the vehicle being the order it is, I can't imagine they've spent any money whatsoever on this front end. And of course, they haven't. The engine's rotten, gearbox haven't even got there yet, but given this, it'll need to be sorted as well. Cue the trucks. Busy day for trucks. The side bolsters here, a lot of steel, nice and thick. It is properly solid. It's hard to tell just how decent it is because of all this rubber debris that is completely over this entire section. I'll get this cleaned up so we can have a bit better look at it. I do need to address these bolts. As mentioned, I can't... I can lift that up and... They kind of sit in there, but I need to remove these in order to check if the frame's square, because again, this should lift off nicely, the bolts should not foul. I don't know whether having this undone, not tightened up, is going to affect that, but again, I shouldn't need to have this so tight that it then brings in the top section. Weirdly enough, there is this little extra piece at the front here, which it looks like it's supposed to be a part of the side piece, but it's got a cutout, and then it goes to the front, then it's got a lovely gap there, which, okay, yeah, the rubber can fill that anyway. It's just weird that I don't know why it exists. It's not a physical part. The only thing I can think of is that it's filler for the tub to fit onto. But again, then the arch at the front here, it doesn't have anything on it, so why is it there? I thought this was the easiest angle to show just how bad the rear tow out is here. And even the camber is still slightly off, and it shouldn't, because I did put the wheel back on properly, so the camber itself, hmm, I'm not really sure about, but the toe out, the alignment, completely off. I don't know if it's the wheel. I will be jacking this up later and spinning it, see if it wobbles, but it's a little hard to tell on camera, very, very obvious in person, but I'm sure you can kind of tell that angle is not correct. I'll move out of the way just so you can get a bit better idea. Again, this whole rear section I'll be changing. I'm going to put on the, uh, the Porsche part so the rear section can be wider. I don't have any problem then with you know, having the body further out. I don't need wider tyres in order to fill the guards. It's a shame though because I do like these wheels. Again, can't really use them anyway. But, hmm, have to find out. Hopefully it's not the wheel. Another problem which will need to be sorted is the steering column. We had the issue of the alignment where if you turn the steering wheel, the outer sheath would foul on the inner tube. The alignment issue is number one, mainly due to this section here, not lining up properly with the column. Borrowing Mr. Daniel's jack handle here. We put that like so you can kind of see there's a fair bit of play in between where we can have it. I believe, and of course I will have to move for a second, that is roughly where it should be. Which, as you can see, the plate starts all the way over here. There is next to nothing over in this section. This entire box will need to be removed, shifted over, in order for it to line up properly so I've got enough material. If I try to bolt on at the moment, I'm only going to have one side. There's not enough material on the rest of it to be able to do it properly. Ferrari style? So the journey continues. As mentioned in the last build episode, kind of build episode, 
I will be starting from base, which means we'll be tearing down this car, starting from the ground up, and of course then bolting everything to it once we've got those sorted. I will of course do a bit of tidy up first along the way, mainly get all this crud off the space frame, ensure there's nothing wrong with it as such, lift that off, make sure it's in perfect alignment, I say perfect very loosely, and then of course sort out the front end before I actually start ripping everything out. I do want to make sure there's no hidden surprises when I start to bolt everything back on. So the little bits that I come across along the way, we'll tackle those. And then of course we'll get to a point of sorting out the main base. That's going to be the fun factor and of course I will again talk to someone about either repairing or completely starting from scratch with these floor pans. Fingers crossed I don't. I really... I should, but I don't want to. Anyway. As always, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. Like, subscribe, comment below, etc. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbour that if he's ever going to film something, make sure he does it on a day when there's a lot of trucks in the background, just so you have to keep repeating yourself over and over and over again. Always fun. Anyway, until next time, guys, cheers.